So you purchased a new espresso grinder and you're ready to up your grinding game, but you're having some issues. Maybe your grind is too coarse and you can't get it fine enough, or you're getting some clogs. Maybe your espresso shots are coming too fast or too slow. Hey, espresso lovers, Mark from Whole Latte Love here to help you solve those problems and more. Today, I'll cover the basics of what you need to know when working with a new grinder, how to break it in and season the burrs, some grinding do's and don'ts, plus I'll have some more tips along the way. I have a few different grinders here, so let's take a look at some basic parts common to most makes and models. The hopper holds your beans. Now, some of those may have a shutoff to stop bean flow. Close that shutoff and you can grind out beans without removing the hopper, or remove the hopper and dump beans without making a mess. Some grinders have an interlock switch, which prevents the grinder from running unless the hopper is mounted and properly positioned. So if your grinder is on and will not grind, do check for that. Grind size adjustment varies by make and model. It could be a knob uh, like on this Eureka grinder or some type of rotating collar like on this Chiato grinder. Some grinders have a set screw like this, which limits the adjustment. If you find yourself hitting a stop, which limits adjustment, remove the screw to enable additional grind size adjustment. A lot of people run into this when trying to adjust grind finer, and it's common on many Chiato grinder models. You can leave this screw out if you like, or put it back in after making a grind size adjustment. Most grinders allow you to access the grinding chamber, which houses the burrs. This allows you to clean inside, replace burrs, or manually clear stubborn jams. How you get inside, that's going to depend on the model of grinder you have. If you need to open up your grinder, make sure it's unplugged before doing so. You know, you don't, don't want to lose any fingers. Off the grinding chamber, there may be a short passageway leading to the outlet. This is a common area for clogs. At the end of the outlet, you may have a static and or clumping control device which looks like a very coarse screen or a flexible metal flap. If clearing a jam, make sure these areas are free of ground coffee and any residue. Later in this video, I'll show you how you may be able to clear a jam easily without opening up the grinder. The do's and don'ts for grinding. When adjusting grind size finer, the grinder should be running or completely free of beans. If the grinder is not running when adjusting finer, you can crush partially ground beans between the burrs to the point the motor will not start. Now, manufacturers will not tell you this in a manual, but it's okay to adjust to a coarser setting without the motor running. But if in doubt, have the motor running when making grind size adjustments. Should your grinder not start grinding when requested or develop a jam while grinding, cut power to the grinder as fast as possible. You don't want to continue running the motor as the jam could get worse. Turn off the grinder's main power switch if it has one, or pull the plug from the outlet. I'll cover how to correct for a no start or jam coming up. Do clean your grinder from time to time by opening up the grinding chamber and brushing it out, as well as the delivery chute. Or you can use Ernex grinds to do the work for you. Follow package directions for that, but really it's as simple as grinding it through like beans for cleaning. In normal home use, clean every one to two months. The purpose of seasoning a grinder is to get the burrs and grinding chamber coated with coffee oils. This does a couple of things. First, a coating of oils from the beans makes burrs and other surfaces more slippery and less likely to jam with ground coffee. Second, it increases grinding speed. As the grinder becomes seasoned, you will grind more grams of coffee per second. Now, you can let the grinder season with normal use, and the coffee ground during seasoning is going to be perfectly fine to use for making espresso or for other coffee brewing methods. If doing this, start at a grind size that's coarser than the table salt-like particle size you'd use for espresso. New out of the box, it's going to be really hard to say how fine a grinder might be set. Unless there's a clear indication on your grinder of how fine it's set out of the box, I'd back off to a coarser setting. Then, as the grinder is running, slowly adjust to a finer size that's similar to table salt. It may take a few grind cycles to get there, depending on how coarse you started. Make this adjustment slowly, and again, 
only while the grinder is actually grinding. At this point, the grinder is not fully seasoned, so you're going to want to avoid making quick major adjustments to a finer setting for at least a pound of grinding. For faster seasoning, you can pick up some cheaper beans and run a pound through at a coarser setting. A size, you know, suitable for drip brewing works well. Our tech support pros, they recommend something like eight o'clock coffee because it's cheap and widely available. But if there's a coffee you like and can grind up for a drip for yourself and use or give it away to a friend, you can do that. I'd recommend avoiding lighter roasts for seasoning as those beans are gonna have less oils and they're harder than darker roasted beans so they can stress less powerful appliance grade products in high volume grinding. A few main causes of jams and grinders. One is a grind setting that's much too fine, especially in an unseasoned grinder. Another, making rapid, large adjustments to a finer setting. Again, unseasoned grinders are especially susceptible to that. Or you may have a grind chute and or static and clumpy control that's plugged up with powdery fine grind or accumulated coffee oils. Jams can often be cleared by adjusting to a much coarser setting and grinding again. So if you get a jam, stop the grinder, note your current grind setting, and then adjust to a much coarser setting and start the grinder again. That coarser setting pushes more coffee through with more force, which can clear the jam. If coffee starts dispensing, wait until you see that coarser coffee come through and then slowly adjust back to your original setting. If this does not work, you will have to open up the grinding chamber and clear the clog manually as described earlier in the video. Grind size is the most important variable to get right when making espresso. Now, if you're newer to espresso, you've probably heard about the golden rule, which is an espresso extraction, regardless of ground coffee dose used, should finish in 20 to 30 seconds from first drip in your cup. Now, I've got an in-depth video which takes you through getting the grind size right, a process called dialing in. You can watch that video using the link right up here or it's down in the description as well. It's really simple to do and works like this. If your shot is too fast, grind finer. If it's too slow, grind coarser. Pretty easy, right? Now, there's a bit more to it like controlling other variables when dialing in, so it's only the grind size affecting your extraction timing. So do watch that video if not familiar with the dialing in process. It's basic beginner espresso technique. But once you've got that down, you can move on to more advanced techniques like using brew ratios. Well, I hope that's helped you out with grinders. As always, if you have any questions on this or anything coffee, use those comments and I'll get you some answers. I'm Mark, thanks for watching. If you like this stuff, do be sure and subscribe to the channel and come back soon for more of the best on everything coffee brought to you by Whole Latte Love.